not as severe uh, in Africa, I think, again, largely because of the level of organization and the spreading of the impact of, of this uh, at that time. <coughs> End of the 1980s, the balance of forces changes, and it still took, 1988 was the decisive battle in Rendafaba, and it still took uh, three more years, really, practically, uh, before the war was over. Uh, which is just about equivalent to the time the United States spent in World War II. Came to an end uh, in the spring of 1991, and I went back to uh, Eritrea with my wife, uh, Debbie Hurd, whose name was on the beginning of the photographs. Uh, at that time, and some of these are Hurd. Asmara, if you were there in the early 90s, was really a very happy place. It was a fortunate place because the war had not actually taken place within the city. So the levels of destruction uh, that were visited on other towns and cities uh, was not matched there. Uh, poor, but neat, well-tended uh, country, I mean, a, a city uh, its residents took great pride in. And remarkably, of course, a city in which a woman could walk alone at 2 o'clock in the morning and not be afraid. Um, it was a very positive time to be there. Uh, people were coming back, as I said in the beginning. Uh, many of you may have been uh, part of that or at least seen it at the time. Uh, people were coming in a kind of reverse Peace Corps almost to come back and volunteer for months at a time. There was a lot to do because the country lay in shambles, the, this Masawa, the entrance to the Masawa, uh, where the destruction was quite extreme. Uh, this was actually the, right in the main intersection of Dekamari. So there was a lot of work to do, but there was also the work of constructing a new state uh, and pulling the country together to move on uh, under a, a new government. First came the referendum in 1993, again, uh, time of, of great hope uh, and, and promise. And we all know the outcome was 99.8% for sovereignty, uh, extremely high turnout of those who were registered. Uh, of course, there were others who were not registered uh, for a uh, combination of personal and political reasons uh, that again highlight the fact that the situation was not all uh, as happy as it seemed for everybody. But there were, there were people coming there, a family coming back from Sudan, a, a laborer in Port Sudan who came back, uh, set up a tent in the ruins of his old house in Nakba to put it back together again. Uh, other shopkeepers in Nakba who were putting together uh, buildings that had been destroyed by the shelling during the war. Uh, even in Asmara, this is right next to the municipality building, the park being uh, repaired. There was just activity everywhere you went. Uh, in, in those first years. Uh, food distributions had been turned into food for work programs. You had people out building roads, planting trees, terracing hills, uh, a huge amount of activity, uh, and people weren't idle. Uh, volunteer activity also was reflected in, in programs that still go on to a lesser extent today, now under the National Service and not volunteers. Uh, to build infrastructure, and in this case, uh, a dam outside of Amadeva, uh, which gave the, the town a year-round source of uh, reliable water. Schools were opening up in October in Nakba. Women were being organized uh, here in Hagaz. Uh, women, you notice, uh, they're all pale. I can't see it very clearly, but they are. Um, Coming out to hear about their rights, uh, the front was also demobilizing uh, many of the former fighters, uh, and there were, in this case, uh, women who were transitioning out of the front with difficulty, social problems, uh, and, and high levels of divorce, but at the same time opportunities for work in non-traditional sectors like this. Also in the media, of course all state media at that time. All this came to a kind of grinding halt in 1998 when war broke out again uh, with Ethiopia. There was actually a, a build-up to this, though, and it started the, the, the changed situation. 
really started earlier in the mid-90s in the western part of the country with the appearance of jihad coming out of Sudan, planting landmines uh, and, and threatening, without a, a great physical impact, but at least sending a kind of message that, uh, uh, that you, you couldn't uh, be sure what to expect.
to look at the conditions of the refugees coming out and to try to understand in some better way uh, what was going on.